now. On 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. It is that most exciting time of the year, Julie Cuttenlock. We all wait with bated breath and anticipation as the two presidential gladiators stride into the arena. Tonight <laughs> is the debates. We are all waiting with bated breath. Well, we're going to be talking more about this on the show. We're going to be joined by Charlie Spearing uh, from the Daily Mail, uh, author of the uh, book Amateur Hour. Uh, Kamala Harris in the White House. He's going to join us to talk about it. We're going to be joined by Bill O'Reilly. Also has written a new book, Confronting the Presidents, No Spin Assessments from Washington to Biden. Uh, and uh, Byron York is going to be joining us as well. By the way, I'm Andrew Langer, uh, in for Larry O'Connor, sitting alongside uh, the talented and brilliant Julie Gunlock. Hello, Julie. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> listen, I'm, the caffeine's finally starting to kick in. That's the that's the important thing here. Uh, and we've got, listen, we've got, uh, yes, we have the debate tonight, but we've got uh, pretty big fish to fry right now because there is an out-and-out assault on one of the most important institutions in our constitutional republic, that of the United States Supreme Court. The left doesn't like the fact that there has been a return to center and centrist principles and constitutional principles. They don't like it, so they want to remake the court. Joining us right now is Mark Pauletta. He's a senior fellow at the Center for Renewing America. He's co-editor of the book Created Equal, Clarence Thomas in his own words, uh, he worked on Clarence Thomas's, Justice Thomas's confirmation. And Mark, the left doesn't, they've never liked Justice Thomas. They've always wanted Justice Thomas out. Now that he is the senior justice on the high court, well, they they want to remove him, you know, faster than otherwise. So they want to stack the deck against him, don't they? Um, Andrew and Julie, thanks for having me on. That's exactly right. Um, they've been after Justice Thomas for 30 plus years. Um, he's our greatest justice. Uh, and he is. I mean, the court's jurisprudence has really followed Justice Thomas's uh, jurisprudence over the years. And now they're adopting things on abortion, affirmative action. But what's really chilling, and I hope it comes up in the debate tonight, is that the Democrats, and this is Kamala Harris, this is Chuck, Chuck Schumer, uh, Senator Whitehouse, uh, Joe Biden takes any still around. <laughs> they have, they're pushing legislation that would, what I call, pack and disqualify Justices on the Supreme Court, meaning, you know, everyone knows about the FDR pack, uh, court packing plan, which failed spectacularly, but that was just going to add uh, six, up to six justices. Okay, the way, you know, again, FDR was upset, the court was striking down his New Deal legislation, and so he wanted to just take, take it over, destroy the independents, kind of control their decisions. What Kamala Harris is doing is endorsing legislation that would say, you're going to add justices, and the minute you add the first justice, the senior most justice gets disqualified immediately. So who is that? That is Clarence Thomas. So yeah. in May of 2025, if Kamala Harris wins and you have the House and Senate uh, in Democrat hands, Clarence Thomas will be disqualified under this plan from ever sitting on another case, okay, like 99.9% .9 of the Supreme Court cases, it's called their appellate jurisdiction. He will not be able to participate. And then the next person up when they appoint the next justice would be uh, John Roberts and then Sam Alito. It goes in order of seniority, wow. but the whole point of this legislation is to take out the conservatives so that they can sort of flip the court on steroids. You know, instead of just packing where you, you know, they would go up to 18 justices, right? But only wow. the nine most recent would have what I'll call active, it's called active service in their, in their, in their legislation. And so people aren't focusing on how radical, like this, is, there's nothing like that this has been done. Uh, even FDR's plan, which was universally right. uh, panned, isn't even close to this. So the, but the person first up is Clarence Thomas, who, as I said, is our greatest justice, has over 750 opinions, who has his jurisprudence has led the way for the court. And that would be just basically cut off in an instant once, uh, you know, under the Democrats plan. Now, I think it's unconstitutional, but it's so dangerous that we could have some real problems down the road. And let's let's get into this, too, Mark. I had a conversation a couple of weeks back with Ilya Shapiro, and he pointed out, and I think rightly so, that that they're doing this under the guise of depoliticizing the court. But when you start having these fights now every couple of years, um, that makes the court more political, not less, doesn't it? That's a great point. Ilya's uh, been writing great stuff on this. That's exactly right. Every two, you, every just every president, uh, presidential candidate would be guaranteed two two slots, uh, the first and third uh, years of their presidency. Uh, so it makes it more political. It makes it injects 
politics and the promise of a Supreme Court justice, uh, you know, every every two years. And uh, but more damagingly, right, is that it's that for this time. I mean, I think that the Democrats, like the minute they get their majority, they would they would wipe out this legislation, right? They're jumping the shark in terms of yep. trying to control the decisions of the court. They don't care about the long term because they'll they'll change it. <laughs> they'll go back once they have their majority. They'll wipe out whatever they do yeah. because that's what that's that's how they look at the court. It's our court to control. We will do whatever we need to make sure it renders the correct decisions. Mark, the Democrats are very excited that um, late last week, both Liz Cheney and Dick Cheney came out and endorsed Kamala Harris. And they cited being conservatives and also their respect for the Constitution. In fact, Dick Cheney actually said, as citizens, we each have a duty to put country above partisanship to defend our Constitution. And yet they didn't say, we're just going to sit this one out. They actually endorsed Kamala Harris. And they, on the people on the left, particularly like people like The View and, and, and some of the media are saying like, oh, wow, this is really going to convince Republicans that our fence sitters uh, to actually switch over to Kamala Harris. What is your advice to people who think that it is their duty to put country above partisanship to defend the Constitution? Is that the right move to vote for the Harris Waltz ticket? If you believe in our, our, our country and its values, you are uh, you are obligated to, to, to vote for Donald Trump. The Democrat plan, as we're seeing right now, the Democrat agenda under uh, Biden Harris and under Harris Waltz would even be worse. It's destroying the fabric of our country. It's you know, allowing you know tens of millions of illegal aliens to come into our country. It's it's destroying the rule of law. So I don't get this at all. Extraordinarily disappointed. Not entirely surprised. Yeah. Uh, certainly with Liz Cheney, but but with Vice President Cheney, um, it's the wrong answer. Uh, you know, um, uh, they should be. You know, if people have problems with Donald Trump in, you know, whatever they might have, you know, if they're Republicans or conservatives, I mean, he is, he will, he is the right answer. There, there's no excuse. There's no, um, you know, um, uh, justification to vote for, um, as a conservative to vote for Kamala Harris uh, in this upcoming election. They will destroy our country. They will destroy the Supreme Court. I mean, if you believe in the rule of law, they will just, you know, this is the antithesis of that. I mean, even in Venezuela, where they, they packed the court, uh, Ch- Chavez, he took, you know, he just packed the court. He didn't disqualify justices. He just added, um, uh, there was 12 justices, I think, and they added 20. Or there's 20 and they added 12. Wow. And what happened down in Venezuela, it was for, uh, 45,474 cases from 2004 until 2014. There's a study on this by a Venezuelan law professor. Um, when Chavez came in, uh, and the court was giving him problems, <laughs> not, you know, as, as you know, not, sure. not, not agreeing with his plan. He packed the court from uh, 20 justices to 32. He added 12. And for wow. a 10 year period, and it continued on. They never ruled against the government on all this of confiscation course. of private Listen. property, of, 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 of all the sort of thuggery that the Chavez government did. The, the Supreme Court upheld it. Why? Because it was a rubber stamp now, right. a dictatorial government. And that's what's going to happen under the, uh, the Harris walls if, if they get their way, that they will Perfect. uphold every authoritarian, Mark. As, you know, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, man, we got to, we got to, unfortunately, we got to leave it there. Mark Pauletta, senior fellow at the Center for Renewing America, co-editor of the book, Created Equal, Clarence Thomas in his own words. Thank you so very much for Thanks, joining Mark. us today. Listen, we got so much more to get to right now. It is 7.15 a.m. WMAL. Making sense of the news. Live. From the Home Paramount Pest Control Studios. Home Paramount, the leader in pest control since 1939. Listen, Julie, I mean, just to put a pin in what Mark Pauletta was saying, you know, we already have a situation in which these administrative agencies like the FTC, they have their own courts and the system is stilted against the folks. I mean, they already are, are largely rubber stamping the agencies. It is Katie bar the door. If uh, if uh, we go down this road. So listen, um, uh, <laughs> are you aware that Kamala Harris is not vice president of the United States? Oh, really? Because if you look at her campaign website, it looks as though like, it's it's all about it's all about change. Uh, MSNBC yesterday was all about Kamala Harris will be the change, change agent. agent. And they seem they seem, you know, astounded. They seem astounded that the the New York Times poll found that the majority of Americans think that Donald Trump is the change candidate that's out yeah. there. They they can't wrap their heads 
around this. But yeah, they released their policy positions, kind of. They look remarkably similar to the policy well, positions that were on Joe. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, well, the wording is interesting. Um, yes. Secure our broken, or I'm sorry, ra- rather, secure our borders and fix our broken immigration system. Let's just think about that. Secure our borders. She yes. could do that right now. Uh, she could go to her boss, wake him up from his nap, uh, wipe his chin, and then tell him to secure the border. It's through executive action. Then the next is fix our broken immigration system. We know exactly what that is. That is amnesty for all of the millions of people who have come into this country, including the Haitians in uh, in uh, Ohio who you know are already here legally. Um, but and then you know immediately register the, them to vote. Um, but it just kind of is interesting. The headings here. It's sort of an admittance of of failure. Um, well, yeah, it, when it is. You're it the is sitting way, vice president. It, it is a way. It's fascinating, right? The the sort of the the mental gymnastics that go into this because it is both. We are the change candidate, and yet we are cleaving ourselves to every failed policy of this administration. They're going down this road. Um, and there was a, a, the doubling down on the admission. You and I didn't talk about this last week, Julie. But we knew I've been talking a lot in my in my uh, policy job about the fact that the Inflation Reduction Act was nothing of the sort. It was essentially, you know, stealing money out of Medicare to fund the Green New Deal. Biden admitted this last week on the campaign stump for Kamala in Wisconsin. And and, um, you know, Kamala's website essentially admits this, the policy website that, you know, in order to fund the Green New Deal, we passed the Inflation Reduction Act. It's that's in there. Oh, and also, by the way, all of these giveaways uh, that they're talking about, you know, the twenty five thousand dollars here, the fifty thousand dollars there. That's not available to you, basically, unless you are BIPOC. You are, you know. Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, no, the Trump war room, the Trump campaign essentially had a really good thread sort of dismantling this, you know, policy page that they put up in the dead of night the day before the right. the debates. I mean, just think about how far along we are. She 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 has been the nominee now for months and they are just now putting up um, a policy page on the website. It's just astonishing. But the Trump campaign had a great thread on this, on on X. It says Kamala finally uh, has what she generously described as a policy page in her plan. She calls it the new way forward. But she's been in the White House for four years, and it's been a totally a total disaster. Kamala claims she would cut taxes for the middle class. Uh, fact, uh, this is the Trump fact. She voted against Trump's tax cuts, which doubled the child tax credit, delivered wage increases to 6 million Americans, and saved the typical family 2000 uh, in taxes. Uh, Kamala next. Kamala claims she would make housing more affordable. Why hasn't she done that in the last right. four years? Kamala's plan is to give illegals 25000 of your tax dollars to buy homes and drive up the cost for American citizens at a cost of $200 billion. There are more points here, and I encourage everyone yeah. to look at this because these claims and facts are what people need to know going into this debate. Because she will right, lie, tonight. she will claim these things, and hopefully Trump can be uh, very sort of controlled and skilled at, at, at hitting back with these facts, um, it, uh, you know, when she, when she lies about her claims or about By the way, her, in the her next, plan. I think in the next hour I will, after we have our conversation with Byron York, I'm going to tell you all who's going to win this debate, right? Because it's already written in stone who's going to win this debate. Uh, but we have more to get to right now at 7.22 a.m. A Bloomberg columnist recently wrote about financial advisors admitting they don't know how to solve the retirement problem. Even though it's the job of an advisor to have answers, people still don't know how much money they need to retire and confidence levels of those believing they'll have success in their golden years have plummeted. It feels like Wall Street just doesn't get retirement. Many financial advisors focus on growing your money, which is fine for your working years, but in your golden years, you need an advisor who specializes in protection and income. That's what Abe Abish and his team at Abish Financial Services do every day. Call Abish Financial for your complimentary retirement risk and income report. 571-570-3559 or visit the retirementkey.com. That's 571-570-3559. Investment advisory services offered through Abish Financial Wealth Management, LLC, a registered investment advisor firm. Insurance services offered through Abish Financial Services, Inc., licensed in Virginia, endorser is compensated. Opinions are his own. 
Do you struggle with occasional nerve aches in your hands or feet? Try Nervive Nerve Relief from the world's number one nerve care company. Nervive tablets contain alpha lipoic acid to relieve nerve aches, weakness, and discomfort, plus B-complex vitamins to support healthy nerve function as you age. Live life with less nerve discomfort with Nervive Nerve Relief. Learn more at NerviveHealth.com. And try Nervive Pain Relieving Cream to block nerve pain signals at the source. Use as directed. I'm Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. I learned about atrial fibrillation the hard way. My symptoms would come and go. Shortness of breath, fatigue. I kept going. Then I got so lightheaded, I couldn't. My doctor said I have AFib, so I'm about five times more likely to have a stroke. Other symptoms, irregular heartbeat, heart racing, chest pain can come and go, but the risk of stroke stays. If you have symptoms, tell a doctor. Visit notimetowait.com. Sponsored by Bristol-Myers Squibb and Pfizer. Why do you go to Princeton Longevity Center? We go to Princeton Longevity Center because my husband's cardiologist told him having this exam saved his life. Because somehow 20 turned into 40, and now I need to take my health more seriously. The Princeton Longevity Center designed a program to keep me healthy and active, so 50 and 60 will be no sweat. Because even though my cholesterol is high, it turned out my arteries are clear. That's a big relief. Whether you want to make the most of your future years or just want peace of mind, you need the Princeton Longevity Center. Their comprehensive preventive exam combines the latest technology with caring experts to create your personal plan for staying well. Because I shouldn't have to wait an hour for a 10-minute physical. I go to Princeton Longevity Center because I get everything done in one day and take my results home with me. Find out why you need Princeton Longevity. Call 888-8000-PLC or go to PrincetonLongevityCenter.com. Call 888-8000-PLC. That's 888-8000-PLC. Hi, it's Larry with PVI Office Furniture. Our office just got a furniture upgrade from PVI, and it looks incredible. Plus, my new chair has completely relieved my back pain. Looking for office furniture? Visit PVI's showroom or shop online at pvipvi.com. It is 725 now. WMAL traffic and weather every 10 minutes first on the fives. Here is Jamie Witten in the Hadid Carpet Cleaning Traffic Center. All right, we've been busy this morning, but better news on the Beltway, at least as far as the lanes are concerned. Outer Loop and College Park, the crash cleared to the right shoulder, so everything reopened. It's about recovering, but boy, we're back near Central Avenue. Inner Loop with the rubbernecking delays. 270 in Rockville, southbound at 28. Crash to the shoulder, 60. That two over to the shoulder. I've out of Dale City to the Beltway. Now from GarageDoorRepair.com, the WMAL Stormwatch 7 forecast. Get ready for another beautiful September day. We'll start off clear and cool this morning in the 50s for many, but we're going to warm between 80 and 85 later this afternoon. So you'll go from a sweatshirt or a light jacket to short sleeves later today. And then later this evening, temperatures will be falling out of the 70s and overnight lows will range between 54 and 64 with clear skies. Tomorrow, sunny, highs in the low to mid 80s. Same deal Thursday, maybe a few more clouds, but staying dry Friday. I'm 7 News Meteorologist Eileen Whalen. Uh, thank you, Eileen. Right now it's 61 degrees at Reagan National at 726. This report is sponsored by True Green. If you want a great-looking lawn next spring, now is the perfect time to get started. And nobody makes it easier or more affordable to get a green, healthy lawn than True Green. Sign up today for an annual plan and get 50% off one application. Visit TrueGreen.com today. Restrictions apply. Save on wellness favorites at Whole Foods Market. Get 33% off all supplements with Prime through September 10th. Build your ultimate supplement regimen and get your must-haves for less. While supplies last, shop in-store or online. Terms apply. This year, grow your hair back with multi-unit hair grafting and PRP, which grew my hair back. Call 703-763-0016 for a free consultation or go to growyourhairback.com. That's growyourhairback.com. On October 16th, join Chasing Freedom Virginia, one of Virginia's largest conservative grassroots organizations, for a formal dinner honoring our veterans at Trump National Golf Club in Sterling, Virginia. Share fantastic food, drinks, and conversation with special guests, former Congressman Alan West, former Secretary of Defense Christopher Miller, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, and a number of former Vietnam POWs. Tickets are limited. Visit ChasingFreedomVirginia.com today to reserve yours. That's ChasingFreedomVirginia.com. Now on 105.9 FM and streaming worldwide on the WMAL app. O'Connor and Company. W-M-A-L. 
Well, good morning, everybody. It is 7.37 a.m. on News Talk 105.9 WMAL. We are making sense of the news. I am Andrew Langer. She is Julie Gunlock. Hello, Julie. Good morning. And they're going to the trouble of having a debate. And so, and, uh, listen, we have to talk about it. I, I, I've been actually eager to talk about this debate for a while. We're going to be joined in a little bit uh, by Bill O'Reilly. Yes, that Bill O'Reilly, author of the new book, Confronting the President's No Spin Assessments, from uh, no spin assessments from Washington to Biden. Uh, we're also going to be joined by Byron York uh, uh, to talk about the debate tonight. But joining us right now is Charlie Spearing. Uh, he is the uh, the uh, he's a political reporter for the Daily Mail. He's author of the book Amateur Era Hour. Let me see if I can talk to you here, Julie. He is the author <laughs> of Amateur Hour. This is Amateur Hour Radio. Uh, Kamala Harris in the White House. And Charlie, let me start here with this, which is this idea of uh, of. We just got the New Republic's got a, a, a piece out. We now know that Kamala Harris's uh, policy page on her website uh, in no small measure lifted from the policy page of the Biden uh, website. That is emblematic of amateur hour, is it not? <laughs> yes, or the beginning of an amateur era, as you coined earlier. Mm. I think I've got a yes. sequel title. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's good. So. So listen, um, I, I well, you know something. I may have to. I may have to jump the gun on this. I, it's a foregone conclusion that Kamala Harris has won this debate. She is going to be declared the winner, regardless of what happens tomorrow. Is she not? Yeah, that's a good point because we haven't seen her on the presidential debate stage in a long time. And the last time she was even on a debate stage, she was debating her colleagues on who could be the most radical, who could be the most like Bernie Sanders. Uh, without looking like Bernie Sanders, and that was kind of the that was kind of what they did. And so, going back and looking at her history, wow, there's so many prepared moments that she, you know, had prepared. She had the zingers and then uh, delivered them on the stage. Some of them hit, like the one she launched against Joe Biden. That one hit. Some of them didn't hit, and uh, I chronicled them all in a in a, in the Daily Mail article this morning. Uh, there's there's definitely some moments that she has scripted in the past that didn't land. So we'll have to see. You have to imagine she's preparing like none other because it really will mean a lot uh, for the future of her campaign. You know, you you do. I am. I've read your piece in the Daily Mail this morning, and you talk about how she's just given two short, lackluster media interviews that did nothing to enhance her authority. There is something about you know. When you face the media, it's practice. It's almost practice for how you will face other world leaders, um, voters. Uh, you, you are you are sort of practicing to to give your views on particular issues and why it's important. Um, she has not tested herself. It's re- it's it's really frightening to think about her if she is elected, taking office and not having sort of pra- like I said practiced. Uh, you know, again, conveying her ideas to the American public and again to foreign leaders. Um, what what do you think about, I mean, is there anybody out there besides you that, that feels that this puts our country in danger? The, 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 again, the, the fact that she's she's not really tested on the issues. Right. You know, if you have an idea of where you want to take the country and you have a firm conviction, right? Like no one, no one pretends that Donald Trump does not have a firm conviction and what he wants to do to our country. You know, he says it every single day, says it every single day, every single hour, make America great again. But what is Kamala Harris's conviction? Is she a real politician or just a, just a phony who can't articulate her vision, uh, even to the media, even to you know? People who support her, you know, if she can deliver a good speech, as she proved on the campaign trail and at the Democratic National Convention, that's fine. That's a good start. But you have to be able to explain, articulate, and debate these ideas. That's the whole purpose of American politics. And, yes, if we, if we end up with Kamala Harris as president, we're, there's a huge part of that is going to be, well, what does she actually believe? Right, and 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 here's here's my question about tonight, Charlie. Um, it, it, again, regardless of the fact as to whether or not she flames out spectacularly, and I don't think she's going to flame out spectacularly, but I think she's going to. I think it's going to be a lackluster debate performance that will be declared a victory. Um, there's always the the next step, which is that that you know, 
you know, I've, I've been saying for a while now that, uh, that uh, uh, you know, in order to make Kamala Harris appear presidential is to make her president. What, what do you make of the, the idea that Joe Biden can still step down, uh, they catapult Kamala Harris to the presidency, and then, you know, Donald Trump is running against the incumbent president who's the first African-American woman to be president of the United States? Yeah, there you hear that a lot, and it has to, you know, usually this scenario would is sort of pictured as a reality if she does flame out and she is, you know, and does end up fading a bit, a couple points behind, if it looks like she's continuing to fade, then maybe they might deploy this last-minute thing because you can't replace the presidential candidate twice, and maybe right. you can, oh, right. but I don't unless. <laughs> Unless she develops some sudden illness, you can't really uh, replace the presidential candidate at this point. So I do think it's a, it's a tool that they have in their in their bag that they will launch if, if they need to. Well, his name is Charlie Spearing. He is a reporter for the Daily Mail. He's author of the book Amateur Hour, Kamala Harris in the White House. Charlie, thank you so very much for joining us this morning. You bet. Uh, you both Take- uh, enjoy the debate tonight. <laughs> Thank you. We all believe me. We will uh, listen. We got uh, we got uh, Kate Middleton news uh, in a moment at seven forty three a.m. on O'Connor and Company WMAL. Later this morning on the Chris Plant Show, big presidential debate tonight. And if you're not voting in one of a few key swing states, does your vote really matter? Nine a.m. on WMAL. Well, Julie, we have a message from Catherine. The Princess of Wales. That's right. Um, as the summer comes to an end, I cannot tell you what a relief it is to find. Are you doing an accent? Completed. That needs to I stop am, yeah, immediately. Yeah, that's a bad idea. <laughs> as a, <laughs> I could do it in a Baltimore accent. That was terrible. I did, to have finally completed my chemotherapy treatment. Listen, uh, our, our our thoughts and prayers go out to uh, uh, Wills and and Kate uh, on on this. They put out a video yesterday. Let's uh, let's hear this uh, this video. Here's uh, let's play cut twenty seven, Michael. Oh, twenty five. The cancer journey is complex, scary, and unpredictable for everyone, especially those closest to you. With humility, it also brings you face to face with your own vulnerabilities in a way you've never considered before. And with that, a new perspective on everything. Is this filming? Hello? Hello? Yeah, yeah, Michael, it, we get it, it. Yeah. it goes on. It goes. It's very. It's also very visual. There's all these. Uh, they're they're at the beach. They're having a picnic. They're making out. Um, <laughs> beach, honestly, it really is like uh, look, a 1980s Brian Adams it, video. Yeah, yeah, very much so. That's right. Sorry, honestly, it was like soft tone. A, no, no, guys, hold on. Let me. Let me, let me I and... apologize to all of our Anglophile <laughs> listeners and everybody who's hey, look, sort of wait, looking Andrew, with bated look, breath this, on There this. is no bigger yeah. Anglophile than me, and I found this to be too much way yeah, too much a, okay much. now look i know everybody out there is probably just horrified that i'm going to be critical in any way because this is wonderful it's wonderful she has beaten cancer she's in recovery um she's you know obviously got a loving family this is wonderful but can we please <clears throat> not overshare um yes there there were just i mean it was a remarkable amount of oversharing i will say this though and this has been pointed out to me and i i understand this is a couple that if they don't share enough they're criticized right of and, course and so and you know she came out with a video where she was sitting on a bench and she was in a striped shirt and my god the conspiracy theor- theories that came out <laughs> she released a family photo that i don't know if it was altered but it was just a family fo- photo right. and again the conspiracy i mean they can't they can't win. They are constantly no, being picked apart. Plus, they've, of course, got the Looney Tune Meghan Markle always, uh, you know, tr- trolling them and competing with them. What I so- love is, 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 is Prince Roger Clinton, you know, Prince Billy Carter, you know, <laughs> Prince Harry. You know, he, he can't just he can't just let it go. He just well, he, interestingly, meanwhile, Prince Harry has his own announcement to wreck Kate's yeah, cycle. Prince and, Harry's and just, new just, Netflix show. Yes. Sorry, and interestingly, the the trailer for this new Netflix show about polo, the game of polo, uh, that came out about an hour after this announcement came out they can't they can't even give her a day so anyway this video hey we're really glad that princess kate has recovered we're really glad that she's doing well um but maybe don't 
overshare quite so much. Yeah, I, I agree with you. By the way, on the subject of polo and polo documentaries, and this is going out to all of our classic rock fans uh, that are out there. Uh, Ginger Baker, the drummer for Cream, watching him play polo, fascinating because it's Ginger Baker from Cream. A documentary about Prince Harry playing uh, playing polo, yet not so much so. It's seven fifty-two a.m.